what is up amigos? Today we're talking about pressure gradients explained and pressure gradients are one of the most important parts of not only aerodynamics but fluid mechanics in general and they affect many different systems. So in this video we're going through what they are and then some very important examples as to how they affect the flow over objects and then what that means. So first of all, a pressure gradient is where you have the flow going along somewhere. It doesn't need to be over anything. It can just be in air, like just a free space, or it can be over something or in a space if you have a channel, for example. And the pressure changes as you go along. So the point here, whatever pressure it is here, P1, then at the next point, P2, the pressure is something else. And depending on how far this distance is, that then creates a pressure gradient because if let's say P2 is higher than P1, the pressure gradient is positive where as you go further along, there's pressure actually pushing back on the flow. Alternatively, if P2 is less than P1, then as you go along, it's actually pulling the flow along and making it accelerate. And in fluid mechanics and aerodynamics in general, we generally denote this by the P on DX or whatever other coordinate system you want to use. So in this particular case, this is x in this direction, but you can have as y or z. Also, you can also look at the orthogonal components. So you can look at the pressure gradient going from bottom to top or from out of the page to into the page or along the page or any other direction you like. So then you just change this symbol here to whatever is the corresponding symbol. This literally tells us the change in pressure with the change in distance, whatever we're looking at. And this features in many important equations, for example, in Navier-Stokes equations, the three there, this will feature, and this is a major driving force for flow. As I mentioned, if you have, let's say, P2 is less than P1, naturally, the air is going to go from P1 to P2 to migrate that way, because flow air always goes from uh, high pressure to low pressure. Now, let's talk about a few examples which are very important and how the pressure gradient affects the flow. So one a uh, quintessential example is a, an airfoil. So let's say we have an airfoil like this and it's pitched to some uh, angle of attack and this is quite important because usually if it's completely straight on, you won't get flow separation and not much of a pressure gradient either, but there is a little bit. This one here where we have a angle of attack, we get a much greater pressure gradient. So the flow comes along, hits the airfoil, then comes along here. As it goes along here, it accelerates dramatically. So the velocity gets higher, the pressure drops. But as it comes along here, we actually see high pressure back here. So P1, let's say, is here, and P2 is here. Well, the pressure at P2 is greater than at P1. So what this is doing is trying to stop the flow, trying to decelerate it. And this is usually very important when it comes to airfoils because that can then lead to stall. So if the pressure gradient is great enough, what that is doing is pushing the flow back so much that the flow right at the surface of this object, the airfoil, is now not just not zero, but also reversing. So it's actually a negative velocity and that causes it to lift off and that's how we get stalled. Without this adverse pressure gradient, we wouldn't get stalled. So that means that if we didn't have the adverse pressure gradient, you could pitch the airfoil to whatever angle attack you like and the flow would still stay attached and that would change things a lot. So the adverse pressure gradient is very important. And I mentioned here the word adverse that is talking about the flow being pushed back on. So it's, it's, a, it's not great for the airfoil performance. And in this particular case, for an airfoil also applies to really any curved surfaces, even on um, cars, for example, if you have a roof and it's curved and it's too curved, the flow will then detach as well and you get a wake and that's not great for drag either or for lift. Now, another example, which is pretty much fundamental to every wind tunnel out there is if you have a channel flow. So let's say we have two surfaces, the top and the bottom, and the flow goes along here at U infinity or whatever velocity you like. Now, these two surfaces have what's called a no-slip condition, which means that as the flow goes along there, the velocity of the fluid right on the surface, just touching it, will be zero. There's friction. And as a result, we get boundary layers forming. And if you don't know about boundary layers, check out this video here. So as we go further and further along, the boundary layers increase in size. So they might start increasing like this. And you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, great, so what? Well, let's think about what happens here. We know that in boundary layers, the flow is slower. And if you look at this video, for example, which we go through the displacement thickness, then we can understand that, well, that means we effectively have less area for more flow to go through. So these, if we get to here, these two regions, 
the flow can't really go through because this is just a slope boundary layer. So we have the rest of the flow, let's say it's 98% of the flow, that has to now go through, let's say, 95% of the cross-sectional area. So it needs to speed up a little bit. So as it speeds up, we have a U1 here, U2 here. U2 is greater than U1. Because the velocity speeds up, we know from Bernoulli's equation, for example, in this video, that the pressure will drop. So P1 is actually greater than P2. So that's important for wind tunnels because if you have a pressure gradient in your wind tunnel and you have your object here, this can change a whole bunch of things. For example, if it is an airfoil, then that means that you have less of an adverse pressure gradient here because you have a, a favorable pressure gradient from naturally the wind tunnel's uh, test section, which is keeping the flow attached more. Also, by having a lower pressure at the back than the front, that artificially creates drag and uh, changes it as well as um, it can even affect the way that the vortices come off and how they break down, etc. So the pressure gradient through the wind tunnel is very important. As a side note, what we often do is we then just change the wind tunnel's uh, cross-sectional area. So it actually diverges a little bit to take into account of these boundary layer growths, but that is also dependent on the velocity of the flow anyway. So that is the pressure gradient explained and two very important examples that affect so much in our aerodynamics in terms of the pressure gradient and potentially what we can do to overcome it. So that is in this video. If you liked it, make sure to click the like and subscribe button. And we'll see you next time. Peace, amigos.